Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. We're so grateful you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So nice to see those of you who are here in the sanctuary, and welcome to all of those who are joining us virtually on Facebook Live or Zoom. Just a quick reminder to those who are here, if you happen to have a cell phone or something that might make noise during the service, if you could just please make sure that that is silenced, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, let's join together in prayer. turning our attention inward, just allowing ourselves to connect with that part of us that knows itself to be one with all, that part of us that is pure love, infinite intelligence, that part that knows that there is only one life, the life of God, and that its nature is fully and equally expressed in all parts of creation. Everything is created out of this one, and this one lies at the center of all that is, including each of us. And so we are all interconnected on the unseen side of life. And I know it is the impulse of this one for more and more of its goodness to be known and felt and realized throughout creation that brings us together. We feel that impulse of God for us to awaken to that divine essence of our being and to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I know every part of this service supports that intention. We're touched and uplifted by that vibration of love that we feel as a community that vibration of love that flows through all those who are of service today. I know that we are inspired by the music, our musicians, Sam, Karen, and Joanne, our soloist this morning. And I know we hear the message that we have come to hear to awaken to our divine nature through Dr. Mark that he is that vessel through which the word is spoken. And as we hear it, we hear it with open minds and open hearts. There's great healing and revealing that occurs during this time. And I'm so grateful to know that. So grateful for all the blessings we receive. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is absolutely so in the mind of God. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. <laughs>
So now please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's join in our congregational hymn, God is the love that I am. Please be seated. <laughs> so this is our opportunity right now to take that five minute break to just get still, to turn inward, and to commune with that presence of the divine that lies in all of us. And so I invite you to just get still in your chairs, wherever you may be seated, those who are watching virtually. Close your eyes, and for the next five minutes, silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. Just as we just sang, God is the love that I am. Silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
show me the way and I will follow and I accept this path I am called to I open up my heart I open up my mind to the truth that I am worthy by this truth I live. Show me the way and I And I will hear the words unspoken. I open up my heart. I open up my mind to the voice, the voice within me. I Show me the way, and I will listen, and I will hear the words unspoken. I Joanne, beautiful, beautiful. Good morning, all of you here in church, all of you who are here with us virtually, we're glad you're here. Um, I notice uh, that uh, a lot of uh, what people deal with is the appearance of what we call evil. Now, Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind is very clear. He says that evil is not a power in and of itself. Boy, but it sure looks like it. It sure feels like it some of the times, doesn't it? You know, in the old days, um, we'll go back thousands of years, uh, when we had many, many gods, it would be easy to explain evil if you had lots of gods, you know, because a god could fall asleep. Yeah, 
God could fall asleep on the job. There could be a fight between gods. A god could be distracted. You know, they weren't all knowing. But now, since Abraham, one god, okay? So if there is evil, what we do is we implicate God. God must have something to do with the evil that's showing up. But think about this. Ernest Holmes teaches us that God is perfect. So if God is perfect, if God is good, and I believe that God is the good to which there is no opposite, how could God allow evil? What are the evils we're talking about? You know, all the stuff that people deal with, uh, COVID, hunger, storms, disease, crime, suffering, on and on and on and on. People often look to the, in the Old Testament to the character of Job. Now, I really like Job because whenever I feel like I couldn't, possibly bear one more thing, Job reminds me that, <clears throat> in fact, yes, I can, because Job had a lot of uh, difficulty. So Job in the Old Testament, he really loves God. He is devoted to God. He follows the letter of the law. He is a faithful servant. He never blasphemes God. Uh, he's virtuous in his dealings with everyone. So Job, we could say, God, he's a really good guy. He is the perfect image of someone who has faith. But here's the thing. Job gets tested and tested and tested beyond the limits of human endurance. He loses his family. He loses his health. He loses his prosperity. Now, this story probably actually comes from other traditions because it's really, really old. People have been asking these questions for thousands of years. So in the story, God hangs out with the devil, with Satan. Okay. Now, we don't believe in Satan. We don't have a devil in religious science, but um, God is like at the local Starbucks having a skinny latte with Satan, right? And so Satan baits God. And you know, he says, you know, Job's not that good. And see, in this role, Satan is the tester, right? You know, uh, we don't have Satan. We don't have a God that gives us tests, right? If God is all-knowing, why would God need to test us, right? So Satan's take on this is that man is intrinsically bad. I could not disagree more. I believe that people, everybody on the face of the earth, is basically, basically good. And why I say this is I have yet to see one new baby that was born on the face of the earth, and we said, oh, this one's going to be trouble. You know, it just doesn't happen. You don't look at a newborn, right, and say, oh, this one, watch out. He's going to be a lot to deal with. That everybody, we believe that the soul comes in essentially perfect and well, Quimby said it like this. Quimby was the, one of the founders of New Thought. He said, everybody comes into this life like a blank slate. And everyone we meet writes something on our slate. And he says, and I know some people have written some unkind things on my slate. So it becomes our job to, to clean that slate. So poor Job, here he is, a guy who's being tested beyond his limits. But I do believe that people are basically good. So people look at the story of Job in the Old Testament as to why is there evil in the world? Well, you know, after years of studying, I have come to decide that some things are just not ours to know. And, and after a few more years, I'm actually okay with that. I don't know why everything happens. Now, sometimes I come up with a why that... Uh, satisfies my, my finite personality. But some things, I think, just remain in the mystery of God. And, and so God knows, right? And if he doesn't want to tell me, I'm not going to get to know. <laughs> so I think that there's a, an important component of this story, uh, the story of Job, that's about submission to the will of God, that that's the proper way to be. That, uh, that we can throw our hands up. Sometimes there are just things that we don't know yet. It's not my time to know the answer to that. Now, I think Job's wife is an interesting character because she's like so many people. When things are bad, she just takes the attitude, curse God. Well, curse God, we may as well all just die. And it's like, wow, okay, well, how could, you know, how could God let this happen? I don't believe in God anymore. This is what, what Job's wife is saying. And people do this, you know, and I understand. People go through really difficult things and they lose their faith. Right? But to lose your faith in the time of need is to demonstrate that you really didn't have faith at all. That's what Ernest Holmes teaches us. We have to, when things are difficult, cleave to the truth. Really hold on to it. You know? So anything you can say that will 
that will buoy you up, anything you can pray, anything you can do. So evil in the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest says, is that which seems destructive. Evil is an experience of the soul on its journey toward the realization of reality. Evil will remain a problem as long as we believe in it. So here's the thing. We see conditions out in the world around us, and we say, oh, evil, 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 all these things. We see evil there, but every time we do that, we are actually reinforcing it. I think it's because, you know, we have a long history of loving having an enemy. We love to have somebody to blame. Because if I have somebody to blame, it doesn't all fall to me. But evil of itself is neither person, place, or thing, science of mind teaches us. And it will disappear in the exact proportion as we cease using destructive methods, right? So God knows nothing about error or sin or want or lack of any kind. God knows nothing about illness. People say, what do you mean God doesn't know about my illness? God knows nothing of any form of separation or any form of evil. Ernest Holmes says the tragedy would be if God did know, because if God knew, that would mean it was real, right? But what the infinite mind knows has to be real, right? So what kind of a God would we have, right? What kind of a God would we have that knew and created evil for us, just to trip us up? That's a very old, old way of thinking. That's Old Testament. It was the best they could come up with at the time to explain. But we teach one power that has no opposite, God that has no opposite. God is a principle, right? A principle of life that cannot know death, a principle of abundance that cannot know lack, a principle of health that cannot know sickness, on and on and on. So like Job, we might believe that God has sent a particular evil to us or condemned us in some way. We might think that we are being judged. Well, perhaps we are, but certainly not by God. We might be being judged by other people. We might be judging ourselves, but God does not judge. Every person here knows someone who has had really extraordinary, extraordinary, I'm talking about those ridiculously insane, super big difficulties, and they've also gotten through them, which is the amazing thing, and they made the best of it. They exemplify this forgiving attitude. You know, they, they praise things, not condemn. See, experiences, it seems to me, the experiences that we go through in life will either make us a softer, kinder, more loving, more compassionate person on the face of the earth, or we're going to be more, <clears throat> more crusted over, uh, more difficult. But the spirit holds no evil toward humankind because God is the energy of love itself. And there is no sin, but people do make mistakes. And Ernest teaches us there is no punishment, but there are consequences. So, and we learn from those consequences, because like I say all the time, where does good judgment come from? Bad judgment, usually. <laughs> that before I learn to make good judgment, I've usually made some really bad decisions. So people ask all the time, how do you know, how, how do you know that God loves you? And I said, well, because he gave us the law. God loves us so much, he gave us spiritual law to work with. And they said, well, how do you know the law works? And I said, ah. I know the law works because we all use it. I use the law. You are using the law of mind every single day. So the law returns to us the result of our acts, whether they're true or false. The law returns to us the result of our beliefs, whether it's a belief that supports us and lifts us up or a belief that takes us down. Because a law is neutral. It is a neutral but an intelligent force. So if we do wrong, the law responds with what appears punishment. We do right, it responds with what appears to be a reward. But the law itself is no respecter of person and will bring good or not good to any person according to our use or misuse of it. You know, it can be a law of freedom to those who use it righteously and it will be a law of bondage to those who misuse it. We cannot escape the creative power of our thought. Isn't that incredible? I think it's just amazing. You know, so in Matthew, we find this, no man puts a new piece of cloth on an old garment or new wine into old bottles. You know, Jesus, I think, was teaching a lesson in spiritual development, that we are continually, every day we get up and we are living a new life. You know, and when the old and the new don't fit together nicely, the old being no longer able to contain the new should simply be discarded. You know, who we are, if you think about your life, think about your life, are you different than you were six months ago? Oh yeah, of course. You know, you've prayed, you've meditated, you've read books, you've come to church, watched us on 
TV or whatever. You know, I mean, we've all, our consciousness has evolved and they think, well, am I different than I was a year ago? Oh, I'm a lot different than I was a year ago. How about two years ago? Very different. Because consciousness that we are is always, always evolving. We pray, we meditate, we affirm, we study, and our consciousness keeps moving. It keeps expanding. You know, so our soul can only evolve as, as we do the work, though. So, so we want to keep the good, and you know, we want to take the best from everything we experience and just let everything else go. I was brought up, uh, I was brought up in church, and, um, and I didn't have any problem with it. There was nothing bad there or anything. It just wasn't a fit for me. It just didn't fit what I was coming to believe. But the experience of church was very nice. I loved that there was a community. I loved that we prayed in the morning and in the evening. You know, all of that was really good. I've kept that part, you know. But the parts that didn't fit for me, the theological things that were not a fit, I've just let those go. I've had to let those go so I could make room for what do I believe. You know, Ernest Holmes talked about, I'd rather be a person who is for something and against nothing. So I don't want to be against any other teaching. I, I don't even want that to come into my awareness at all. I just want to know what is it I believe? What do I subscribe to? How do I choose to live my life according to the science of mind teaching? See, I don't believe that we have a punishing, judgmental God. You know, that, that would just not be love. That would not be loving. Now, people believe that they are separate, right? Now, you, the truth is, we could not be separate from God. But we have extraordinary minds. We have extraordinarily creative imaginations. <laughs> and I can really sort of dream myself into thinking that I am separate from God. <sighs> I can dream myself into thinking I'm separate from other people, from life, from my good. But in separation, you know, when we're separate, when we think we're separate, I think that's when people don't show up as their best self. I think that's when people behave badly, right? It, and so, consequently, what I'm pointing to is that's not God, that's us, right? And people say, well, where was God in that? Well, right there, you know, but, but what were we choosing? You know, in any situation, I think what we get to ask ourselves as spiritual students is, is love a priority here? Is being loving a priority? Uh, see, there are laws that God will not violate. If God was being realized in consciousness, there would actually be no bad behavior on anybody's part at all. So it becomes my job to realize God within my own consciousness, to know that God is right where I am. God is working through my hands and through my words. You know, in the Psalms, it says goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. That's like saying goodness and loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life. I love that. See, we experience good and evil quite simply because we believe in duality. But we can put that belief away. We can leave it behind. We can be done with it. It does not serve us. So we used to think that the world was flat, right? And everybody agreed with that. Everybody thought the world was flat. And that was a very limiting belief too, though, and also inaccurate. And so I think, God, if there were things like believing the world was flat, where else am I so convinced of something that I have been unwilling to hold it up to the light for the light to shine through it and show me what part is true and what part is not. So let's turn our attention inward now for a few moments together. I invite you to bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. Just notice your breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And with each breath, allow the area of your heart to become fuller and richer and deeper because it's at the point of our breath where the highest God and the innermost God become one God. And so from the writings of Ernest Holmes, I'll start sharing this thought, that the will of God for you is the will of a boundless life flowing through you. It is the will of joy, of success, of happiness, of peace, of abundance. It is the will of the kingdom of heaven not absent from this earth, but imperfectly seen. I surrender all fear, all doubt. I let go of all uncertainty. I know there is no confusion, no lack of confidence. I know that what is mine will claim me. It will know me. It will rush to me. I accept the gift of life for myself and for everyone. There is no judgment, no condemnation, no criticism. 
I know that any belief in a power that damns or a hell that waits or any devil is false. Each such belief is eradicated. Any effect of any such belief is wiped out. There is no damnation, no judgment coming in or passing through any of us. There is justice, knowledge, right government, divine guidance, without judgment. This does not mean I accept lies or think that mistakes are as good as right action. It merely means that divine intelligence operates through me without confusion, calmly, moving forward, progressing in an upward spiraling, outward reaching manner. I am guided by infinite wisdom into the light which is eternal. My soul is jubilant. I include in my prayer family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we know only the truth, that they are perfect expressions of the one. We bless our church, all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. I know we're blessed by being together that there's a healing that's happening right here, a revealing of spiritual truth. And with a full heart, I say, thank you, God, that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. is kind love does not worry does not boast it is not proud it is not rude it is not easily angered love keeps no record of wrong
not to light any Joanne O'Brien. Thank you, Joanne. Yes. <laughs> Joanne's music is available on iTunes. So, and those two are on her CD. So thank you for sharing with us today. And let's recognize our wonderful musicians here, Sam and Karen. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, a couple of announcements. Donations. So those of you who are here, here in the sanctuary, uh, there are two boxes as you exit the sanctuary where you can drop off your donations. Those of you who are watching online, you can either call into the church office at 818-762-7566. We'll be here for about 30 minutes after service to take your donation via credit or debit card. You can also go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and you can make a one-time or set up a recurring donation there, or just text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Prayer with a practitioner. So those of you who are on virtually, you can get prayer with a practitioner on Zoom after the service, so just go to our Zoom link if you're on Facebook Live, and uh, we can put you in a one, one breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. Here uh, in person, we have a few practitioners who are here who could pray with you either here in the sanctuary or we can set up a space just outside the sanctuary uh, for, for prayer, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Uh, emails uh, for your prayer requests. So if you want to send something in during the week, you need some support in prayer, it's prayer at nhcrs.org. We try to keep it simple. So just send uh, your prayer requests or call into the church office. Option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we check those messages and emails every evening and send those out to our practitioners. So you're well supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service is coming Wednesday, July 21st. We have the meditation at 6.50 p.m. Services at 7, both on uh, virtually Facebook Live and Zoom and in person. 
Um, join us this week for a very special service featuring our very own practitioner, Dean Regan, as guest speaker, joined by me. And Dean's topic is dance to the music. So there will be no chairs, no. <laughs> <laughs> Our Abundance Workshop 2021, a science of mind tune-up for a happy life. So that's going on with Dr. Mark Vieira here on Zoom on Tuesday nights from 7 to 8.30 p.m. through July 27th. Cost is responsible giving, and it's not too late to join Dr. Mark uh, for this. Really, it's a life changing workshop, any area of your life where you want to be experiencing more abundance. That's the whole idea here. And uh, they're working with the Abundance Book by John Randolph Price. And just visit our website, nhcrs.org, to sign up. Circle of Healing, today at 11.30 AM in the sanctuary. Join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart today for this very special healing journey. She'll gently guide you via your chakras in a loving and healing experience. Feeding the Homeless, our Love and Kindness Ministry will be feeding the homeless today. To support this ministry, uh, just go to our website and we have information on how you can make donations to that. In-person attendance, Sundays in the sanctuary, Wednesdays in the sanctuary, we're here. You're welcome to join. Uh, so um, just a reminder that we do ask everyone to wear a face mask in the sanctuary just so everyone can really feel comfortable and it is being mandated now anyway. So, um, but just feel comfortable coming and uh, being with us in person. It's lovely, lovely to have you here. And those of you who are joining us virtually still, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all the ways you support us. Um, you can continue to connect virtually on the Zoom patio before and after service if you're not able to be here in person to connect with your congregation. The men's group is meeting every Sunday still, 11 to 11.30, uh, back to meeting on Zoom only today. And our Zoom meditation is every Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. to 8.15. So, we have lots of ways to stay connected. Hope you will continue to stay connected with us. Um, with that, let's stand and let's sing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at, home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. Life is anchored in truth. I, can I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I, live in the consciousness of peace. I, release, all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. 